Today's video is a story time video, so if you are here to learn about making silver or fame farming or anything about the game Albion Online, which is what you see in the background, unfortunately there won't be any kind of stuff like that. This is purely me telling a story. To give you a quick rundown of today's story, it's going to start out with a dream that I had while sleeping, not like a vision or hopes of the future. Just a simple dream and why I had the dream, which will then go into detail about my past as a child growing up in the ghetto in a trailer park and then talking about the local factions that I grew up around. Let's get into it. So there I was playing Albion Online 19 hours for the day. Time to go to bed. As I sleep, I have a dream. Now, let me explain to those that don't know. I am a lucid dreamer, which means I can control the dreams. I am aware I am in a dream, but after controlling so many dreams my whole life, most of the time I let the dream just do its thing. It picks out a narrative, it picks out a story, I kind of play along with it. If it's something I really don't like, I change it up a bit. And it does take focus, it does take a bit of effort to control the dreams, to change the narrative of the dreams. But generally, I just let them run because it's like an interactive video game or movie to me. So growing up as a child, I lived in the ghetto in a trailer park and the dream begins with me in my old trailer park and there's a knock at my door. So I answer the door and who's at the door you may ask? Well, it's popular streamers Ninja and XQC. Now, let me just explain what's going on here because it's not what you think, okay? I'm not sitting here dreaming of popular Twitch streamers or anything. Now, I've actually never watched a Ninja stream, I've actually never watched an XQC stream, but I've seen them enough times, I know what their face looks like, I know what their bodies are like, I could, you know, if, if I was in a public place, like at the grocery store, and I saw them across the aisle, I'd be like, hey, that's XQC, I, I, I recognize him, it's a recognizable face. And so what my dreams do is it populates the game world, the dream world, with faces and bodies of people that I've seen either not too recently or just subconsciously. It, it tends to not make unique uh, per people. It tends to populate all the random background characters as just random either celebrities or people that I've seen on a regular basis. Now remember, as a lucid dreamer, I'm fully aware. I'm like, what the hell is Ninja and XQC doing here, right? And so they're like, hey man, can we come in? We're hungry. So I let them in and they start digging through my fridge and uh, Ninja pulls out uh, some toaster strudels and uh, XQC grabs a whole tub of ice cream, which is not, a, not something that, I didn't have those things as a child, mind you. I did not have tubs of ice cream and I did not have toaster strudels. Yes, I've eaten toaster strudels as a kid when they were like on sale, but I didn't have like a, a freezer full of this stuff. And so they just start eating it raw. They don't even toast the toaster strudel. Ninja just starts chomping on it, you know, completely frozen. And XQC just grabs a spoon, and starts digging into this big old tub of vanilla ice cream. And they're like, hey, man, thanks for the food. And they're chilling. And then Ninja starts complaining that the toaster strudel which uh, back in the day was probably like a dollar a box or something. He's like, hey, man, these things aren't filled up all the way. You should go get a refund, get your dollar back. And, you know, I'm so like out of character at this point. I'm like, why the hell did my dream choose these two as the background characters? And why are they eating the food that I never had as a kid? This is so stupid. What is the point? What is the plot of this dream? And then I figured it out. So when I was a child, one thing that we would normally do in the trailer park as children is we would do uh, trailer crawls where we would we, we would meet up and then we would go to each other's houses dependent on who had food that week. So essentially, because a lot of us were very poor, you know, trailer parks are very poor. And so it's like, oh, hey, my mom is a pizza delivery driver and she brought home pizzas tonight. Yay, she got them at a discount. Come on over and eat some pizza. Or, oh, hey, my mom is making meatloaf. You want some meatloaf and a can of corn? We'll split it with you. Our big sis is out on, you know, military duty, so we have a little bit of extra. And so uh, us starving, poor, you know, poverty-stricken trailer park kids, we would uh, do whatever we could to, to get food. And generally, like, if I went over to a friend's house and ate their food, then, you know, I would tell my parents, hey, I went over to their house and they fed me, and they're like, oh, okay. And so whenever, you know, we had a little bit more money, we'd make some extra food and then invite, you know, their kids over to eat. And it was just like a tradition. It was like a family thing. We all looked out for each other. We were all bros at the trailer park. 
and we all tried to, you know, keep all the kids fed, okay? And I realized that XQC and Ninja are playing the parts of some of my old trailer park bros, and they're just hungry kids, you know? I mean, they're clearly in their full adult bodies, and so am I, so it's like, doesn't make any sense, right? Because it's like, Ninja is complaining about the quality of a toaster strudel that's like a dollar, and he's a multi-millionaire, and so is XQC, and I'm just like, what the hell, guys? Who cares? So the dream really failed in its, um character selection and it's kind of plot selection, right? And that was pretty much it for the dream. Now, it had me thinking about my childhood and it's like, man, I'm so glad I don't really exactly have to do that kind of stuff anymore where I have to like go to friend's house and be like, hey man, can I eat dinner with y'all tonight and stuff like that. Oh, those are crazy times. A lot, a lot of people don't understand just how bad it gets in the ghetto, right? And a lot of people are like, oh, you shouldn't be hungry, go to a food bank. I always hear that from people that, that have never had to go to food banks, from people that don't live in the ghetto. They think that, oh, there's just char there's just charities everywhere. Just, you know, all those charities that raise food for, for the poor and the homeless and stuff. Yeah, yeah, just go to the charities and they'll give you food. Yeah, bro. Yeah, just go to the food bank. That's what it's there for. You just go to the food bank and get some food. No, it doesn't work like that. And let me, let me tell you why. So the food bank that is uh, local to my area is, you can't walk there. It's, well, you, you have to walk at some point, but... You can't technically walk there, it's too far, it's way too many miles away, and it's even, it's in the deepest of the deep of the worst of the worst ghetto, where people like me would be murdered if I went on foot, for the most part, right? Especially as a small child. Now, granted, uh, you know, a, a child, it's not a child's responsibility to go to the food bank, right? But, um, you know, <laughs> here's the th here's how the food bank works. Let me just try to visualize it for you. So essentially, imagine like, like, you know, really big buildings, right? Like not quite skyscrapers, but pretty damn big buildings. All right, multiple stories tall. So you have the food bank and it, there's one road into the food bank, which is gated and it's always blocked by big trucks delivering food or taking food away. So you can't technically drive to the food bank. You have to walk in a walkable path to get to it, which is also surrounded by a bunch of other very large buildings. And so you can't even park near this building because it's in a city area. And to park there, you would have to pay for parking because parking is not free in the cities around where I live. And so what happens is if you're poor and from the ghetto and you can't afford food, then you obviously can't afford parking. And parking was like, this is back in my childhood, so it's even more now. It was like 20 bucks for like 30 minutes or something. Something ridiculous like that. Also, the rules are if you hear the cat meow in the background, you gotta give the video a like so it'll stop meowing. Anyway, back to the story. So to park near it cost way too damn much, and this is in a very dangerous high crime ghetto. So what you're essentially forced to do is park even further away at one of the cheaper areas, like at least maybe a 15 to 20 minute walk, which if you're trying to carry heavy cans of food and just canned goods from the food bank, you're, it's, it's a haul, it's a real tough job, right? But essentially, you park about 20 minutes away because that's what's affordable and you walk the rest of the way, but you're walking through extremely crime-ridden streets filled with homeless, gangs, at mafias, uh, well, a mafia, not mafias. There's, there's at least three different gangs. There's, um, there, there's one, the mafia, which aren't really in that part of the town. They're more in the suburbs. But regardless, they, they still may, ha they still have a presence there. And also, like, like you're not driving there. You're in, even if you could afford the parking, it's still just as bad and just as dangerous because. Literally, they prey on, like, I know nowadays it's not like it, people don't prey on the poor as much, especially like the gangsters and stuff, but back then they did because they were easy targets and the cops wouldn't do anything about it. So the gangsters would just rob and torment and gang initiate on the poor. So if you were to risk your life to get maybe $15 worth of canned goods for the month, at the food bank, because that's all they'd give you in person, right? Like, if you're not an entity, if you're not a charity that they can do a tax write-off for, you you get, like, 15 bucks worth of canned goods for the month. See you later, bro. And uh, that's all you really got, right? But the streets were just littered with danger. So much danger, man. I'm talking, you're, you're going to be robbed, like, six times before you get there, and then as you leave, they're going to take your food anyway. So, like, you're going to spend your monthly allowance of food from the food bank, 
and you're just and unless you can fight off every gangster and every homeless person, you're gonna get like zerged down Albion Online style in the black zone, real talk, for your bag of canned goods that are nearly about to expire. And the crime has only gotten worse. If I go online and I look at this little website that shows active reported crimes, and it has a little blip, the entire surroundings and, and for like a whole mile uh, of this food bank is just dotted with crime. So for those that don't get it, y you can't go to the food bank, right? But well, how do you how do you get food from the food bank then? They're not going to deliver it to you. They don't do delivery. Well, there was one p type of person or people that the homeless, the gangs, and even the mafia didn't mess with. And that was the church. So where I'm from, churches are like extreme. Like everyone goes to church. Everyone participates in the church. All the churches in the area are actually mutually shared. It's like a safe zone. It's like a little blue zone. All right. It's like uh, the gangsters go to the church along with the mafia members, the homeless people, the police go there, the military, the firefighters, the you know, the, the, the retail workers, and er everybody goes, and everybody keeps the peace, there's no fights, no no one robs each other, no one gets in, in each other's faces, everyone, it like, it's like a, it's like a day where everyone's just, they turn the PvP flag off, right? Now, before I talk about that, I just want to mention, there are meeting places in the city that people go to fight, there is Waffle House, there's Denny's, and of course, there is, I'm not going to say it by name because it may not be a regional chain, but it is a late night bowling arcade entertainment place of sorts. As a matter of fact, there was a huge viral video that happened at one of them where like a fight of like 50 people broke out and they were smashing windows and just stealing everything and everyone was fighting. It was a gang turf war. They went to a freaking children's arcade to have a gang turf war. But anyway, so the church is the one place that the homeless and the crims that they don't mess with, right? For whatever reason, like the the the, the priests, the the you know the other church employees. I don't know what they're called. They're not nuns, but they're kind of like nuns. I, I, again, I don't know the word for it. They have complete amnesty when they go to the food bank. All right, and so well, the way it worked in the past, and it doesn't work this way anymore, sadly. But essentially, what the way it worked is that the food bank could not keep food that expired. It was legally not allowed to. But instead of throwing it away, they would give it to the churches, the, the the church staff, and then they would set up little giveaway tables, you know, and, you know, the people that needed food, mostly the poors, the, the people from the trailer park, that's where I come from, and, and we could go there and, uh, you know, get whatever they got that expired that month, and uh, that, that was just a, a source of free, new and interesting food, and, and yes... I know it sucks to eat expired food, but it's, it's not going to kill you, alright? I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice, but, uh, you know, expires, you know, if it expired five days ago and it's not a dairy product, I think you're okay. Like, a can of corn is not going to just suddenly turn putrid the day of its expiration, right? And of course, sometimes you'd pop a can open and it would be pretty foul, and, and you, you just don't eat it, you just throw it away, it was free anyway. So, and it was actually interesting, and people weren't messing with the church because they're church and it's holy and religion and stuff, no, no, no. What happened was, is that because the church was the uniting force of everybody in the town, what happens was the homeless people or the gangsters that did start crap with the priests or the church personnel, what happened was, Every single person in the city would collapse on them for messing with the priest. Because these churches, they, they had a very cult-like following, like a very devout following. And so if word got around that one of the gangsters, you know, robbed one of the priests on his way to or from that food bank, every cop, every militiaman, every redneck shotgun-owning person, even other gang members would just go raid the guy, beat him up, and make him, you know, give the stolen goods back and, like, ruin his car, and he would be completely shunned and shamed. He'd still be allowed to go to the church, though. But, uh, essentially, he would get basically zerted down for his mis his, his wrongdoings. 
And so any like like everyone got to know who the priests were. And if you saw them walking the, down the street, you know that if you kind of walked with them, you'd be completely safe. And the gangs won't touch you. The mafias won't touch you. You know, the homeless won't touch you unless they're brand new to the area and they don't know any better. And it didn't stop there because the the church personnel would get their revenge in the ways that they do it, right? As in, they would send two people to the gang member's door every single night, like at 8 p.m., knocking real hard and loud on that door, and then passing out little church flyers or business cards or wanting to talk to them about the religion and stuff every single day for years on end, and it was completely legal for them to do. It, they would just, like, troll them because of their, you know... <laughs> their wrongdoings. And I always found it funny that all the criminals and all the organized crime people, you know, they didn't mess with the church because they, they wouldn't retaliate violently, but everyone else would. And then the church themselves would just troll them forever. They were just put on like a shit list and they would just be tormented uh, with solicitors and phone calls and flyers and stuff. Oh, man. Now, of course, things have changed over the years. It's uh, it's gotten way worse, of course. You know, that's how ghettos go. Ghettos don't just magically recover. They either get gentrified or they just get worse and worse and worse. And gentrification doesn't fix the issue or the problem. It just, you know, pushes the rich and the poor even further apart. But uh, one thing that did change is the local mafia. What happened was they opened a pizza chain for whatever reason, you know, mafias do. And it was so successful, and everyone loved it, that they actually stopped doing crime stuff because it was just more profitable and better business for them to just make pizza and pasta. Though lately there was a leadership change in that mafia, and uh, now that pizza place, uh, every time it's like lunchtime and everywhere is super busy, their parking lot is very empty. And the one time I went in there, uh, they, they tried to make me some really crazy offers, which... Um, I, I, I did refuse, <laughs> so I just left, and I'm like, no, I'm good, and I, I just bolted out of there, man, like, I wasn't about to do anything like that, and it, was, it wasn't trolling, man, they were being serious, like, the old crew was great, right, but the new crew, they're just doing, they're going, they're like, rever they're reverting back to their old ways, man, you hate to see it, and as far as those churches go, there was a huge cultist crackdown in the area many years ago, and I don't think they ever recovered. A lot of uh, a lot of those places got bought out. They're just ghost towns now. There's not even, you know, sermons or anything being held there. There's no cars that show up on Sundays. And a lot of these businesses are like just stores, like grocery stores and retail stores are all closing down because everyone keeps mass shoplifting them. And these these like really cheap stores have been opening in their place, like little dollar stores and stuff, like just with really cheap like Chinese gadgets and products. Super cheap and really crappy quality items, and even those are getting pilfered and loit like just destroyed. Like someone Molotoved a couple stores just a few nights ago. And as far as that um, th that trailer park goes, I don't know because I don't visit it anymore. I don't live near it anymore. I don't know any of the people that I grew up with there. They're all dead or in prison, and uh, they have no social media presence or anything. So there's there's none of none of them made it. And then five years ago, I mean, I was in retail, and, and, and that, that food bank is still active, it still exists, and I had to go there once for a meeting when I was, in, you know, in the retail company I was at, and they, they took us by an armed security bus. That's right, we had, like, two police officers on a bus with uh, AR-15s or whatever, you know, automatic, semi-automatic rifles. I don't know the name of the guns, okay? I'm not a gun guy. And, like, all my coworkers were like, why do we have armed guards? And blah, 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 right? And I'm like, bro, you don't know how dangerous this area is. This area is high, highly dangerous. Without these guards, we're dead. They will ram the side of our bus and take us all for ransom. <laughs> And, like, inside the food bank, they had armed guards. They had a lot of armed guards. And the weirdest thing ever is that uh, it was actually bought out by S or something. Okay, so I don't know the, the actual story if it was bought out, and I don't want, like, the company that possibly bought it out or didn't buy it out trying to get weirdly legal with this video. So I just cut the name of the company out completely just to be safe. But it does start with an S, and uh, it's uh, where a lot of people go to drink a certain beverage. But I do remember meeting some of the employees that worked at the food bank, and wouldn't you know it, 
It was the damn priests. So is there a point to this story? Nah, probably not. I just wanted to recite some of my childhood and the ridiculousness of, you know, whenever you you grow up poor and then some rich turd, you know, in a nice neighborhood is like, oh, just go to the food bank, bro. Oh, you're hungry? Just go to the food bank. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll just go die. How about that? <laughs> With that said, that's the video. I don't know what's happening in the background because I'm going to film that later. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Soul Benji. Leave a like, leave a comment because I don't have a social life. I really don't. <laughs> the only social life I had growing up, they're all dead or in prison. Finally, on the right side of your screen, there's a video you should absolutely click. And if you don't click it, you're going to have an annoying animal barking or meowing in the background while you're trying to talk to someone or make a YouTube video or whatever it is you do, you know, at home, I guess, or wherever there's animals. I mean, geez, like, was someone, is anyone that's watching this work at a zoo? Does anyone work at a zoo that watches me? That would be kind of funny. Like, I work around animals every day, bro. Your, your next video curse can't affect me. And for you, Mr. Zookeeper, you're going to fall into the lion pit and they're not going to hurt you, but it's going to be kind of scary. So you better click that that video on the right side right now or it will happen.